Hello, my soccer universe. What a goal. I just finished watching the Monday night games and yeah, I decided to do the review of the two Monday night games that I watched plus the whole set up, whole shebang for the leaks in one video and I hope I won't get too long. I literally just stopped watching. I wanna get this over with quick that, you know, it's gonna be a rough week on me. <laughs> so many matches to watch. Um, let's start in the Premier League. I think that's the uh, a big one. Uh, let's first go through the results. We had, of course, uh, on Friday already Everton beating Burnley 2-0. Uh, Bournemouth last minute winner against uh, Spurs. Spurs getting two red cards. Uh, absolutely crazy game. Uh, Wolves Fulham 1-0 as expected. West Ham Southampton that <laughs> the, team, the match that in Austria everyone was watching. Arnautovic against uh, Hasenhüttl. 3-0 for West Ham with two goals by Arnautovic uh, who made a big show a little bit too late in my opinion. Uh, then Cardiff loses at home to Crystal Palace 2-3 and that basically eliminated them from the Premier League if you want to say. They had no chance with that. And then Liverpool got the yeah important win at Newcastle taking the lead three times Twice Newcastle came back the third time, talked about it in uh, serious length um, in the video that I posted uh, Sunday morning. So yeah, Liverpool was hanging in there, took the lead potentially for the last time this season. Then Chelsea, the early game on Sunday beat Watford, that's why I'm wearing Chelsea. Uh, it's not still the one before Abri Abramovic. And I decided, yeah, let's wear it just a jersey of a team that actually secured something. Because Chelsea secured their finish in the top four. And if they win, they're even top three and they have Champions League absolutely secured. Uh, which is something we cannot say of Spurs, because they overtook Spurs. Why could they secure that? Well, Huddersfield Manchester United 1-1. One, one. An absolute stun of a result, um, given that Huddersfield is the weakest team in the league. Manchester United cannot get a, a win against them. Absolutely an abomination what Manchester United is playing. And Arsenal, they had a good showing against Valencia and they only managed a 1-1 against Brighton. Um, I said it yesterday, they can draw level and points with Spurs in the last round. Uh, however, they have a far uh, the goal differential is speaking uh, is eight goals better for Spurs. However, there is the one chance that Arsenal has to win the Europa League, and if Tottenham finishes fourth, it's Arsenal in the Champions League and not Tottenham. And then the big one: Manchester City against Leicester City. And let's uh, pull this up a little bit more because that was a really big game. I saw. Uh, all, only the second 30 minutes of each half. So um, whatever has happened in minute 1 to 15 and uh, 45 to um, 60, I cannot comment too much on it. Um, I thought in the first half um, Leicester was well in the game and actually was quite dangerous. It was a game very much on even footing in many ways. Yes, City was more dominant, City had chances, but so did Leicester. And I, I actually liked how Leicester um, uh, was playing without any fear of the big, big opponent. No, we're here to get a result. And that actually made me um, quite, quite, quite optimistic for um, the end result. As you know, uh, I am, I really would like Liverpool to win the title, although when I think about it, I said in a, pre a previous video, just looking at the results, yes, Liverpool had the best season in their um, Premier League history at least, but Manchester City is at least as good and they have the head-to-head. -head. And if you win the head-to-head, -head, I think it is fair that Manchester City wins the title. As much as I would wish it uh, to Liverpool and Klopp, and this is a fun squad to watch, but City also. My problem with City comes, of course, with the whole um, Etihad, Scheikdom and all that kind of stuff uh, and the shady financial dealings that they're having, but not 
with the style of play and the team they're having. Although I repeatedly say I'm not a big Aguero fan, who was in the most time a non-factor. Uh, he had a big chance uh, in the second, no, it was in the first half, uh, that was saved um, nicely. And in the second half, um, as I said, I only switched over in the 50 second and saw there was a chance for City. And then it was only City playing. I, I think Leicester was really packed back. Uh, but City still missing uh, chances or not getting quite the breakthrough. And that's basically when Vincent Company said, OK, boys, I'm, I have this takes a shot that hits the top corner. Absolute stunner. Beauty of a goal. Absolute beautiful goal. Will I call it a goal of the season? No, I. we just saw last weekend a goal that I would say was even better, the free kick by Messi. But this was an absolute uh, screamer, worthy of deciding a title if it was, uh, if it would be like that. City then kept control of the game. I honestly never really had the thought that uh, Leicester is going to do anything. And then they did. Uh, I think in the last five minutes of regulation, not stoppage time, stoppage time uh, was a little bit scrappy. Uh, but in the last five minutes of regulation, suddenly Leicester did go forward and tried to do a few things um, and had the big chance where that Ihenacho completely botched a great run through. Uh, midfield, nice pass. He had the free shot and he puts it wide. I mean, this you gotta at least put on goal and see if you get the winner. And so, City, yes, Leicester punted the ball to, uh, three times forward, couldn't get anything done, and City plays it home and is now in prime position ahead of the last day of the season. They have to travel now through to Brighton. And Liverpool has to pay a play at home to Wolves. I said it before, I don't see Brighton getting a point off um, City. I just don't. Um, I think it will be even that Liverpool will have a hard time getting the win against Wolves. So, yeah, especially if they have now the hard game tomorrow. But basically, yeah. That Premier League, we have everything more or less decided from the standings, except for the title. We know who's going to be in the top four. We know who's going to get rele relegated. I think it's the seventh spot, and even that is now uh, decided that Wolves will have that one. So Wolves doesn't have much to play for either. There was a chance if Leicester would win today that they get the best of the rest, but that will be Wolves. So that takes care of the Premier League. Um, Let's go to uh, the next league, which will be Serie A. And there we had the uh, Torino derby um, between Juve and Torino, which kind of ended in a disappointing 1-1. Everyone saying to Juve want to win against Torino. Torino played quite well and deserved that draw. And the late equalizer by Ronaldo, um, you really thought that Torino is going to win it. Yes, Juve tried everything. Deserved the draw between Juve and Torino. Spal Chievo 4 0. Uh, we know already that Chievo is relegated. Udine Inter 0 0. A vital point for Udine, who are really fighting for their lives. Why? Because Empoli beat Fiorentina 1 0. Um, Fiorentina, if they wouldn't have had as many points as they got early, they are really trending strictly downward, which is a, a shame to see because they were really one of those really entertaining sides uh, this season. I'm absolutely uh, sorry to see them dropping down. So solo Frosinone to two, not enough of Frosinone who are now relegated. Um, then Lazio Atalanta talked about that. Lazio took an early lead. Atalanta came storming back and fully deserved the 3 1 victory. Again, some crowd trouble with the Lazio turn, uh, fans turning on their own player, at least one. Uh, was sorry to see that. Uh, I actually would have uh, wished for a draw, but yeah. Atalanta really looks in good position now to secure a Champions League spot, although they have a very, very difficult rest program that we'll talk about in a sec. Parma Sampdoria, um, if you haven't seen it uh, on Facebook, I posted uh, those two teams, the um, fans of 
kind of befriended and to celebrate this friendship uh, each team played uh, with their own colors but in the respective design of the opponent which gave great shirts. Uh, Parma is basically playing in a Sampdoria shirt but instead of uh, red and black they have a blue and yellow stripe going here and Sampdoria basically took their away jersey with the classic Sampdoria pattern and made a cross out of it. Really looked great. Um, I'm not sure if I like those jerseys better than their regular jerseys, but as an idea, it's absolutely uh, great to see that. And the game itself was also not uninteresting, ending in a 3 3 tie. Let's pull it up. Uh, with uh, Sampdoria having a 2 1 lead, um, although uh, Parma had 1 0. Then Asantoria turned turn around, Cagliarella and Tefrel. Um, then um, Cagliarella made it even 3 1 after the half, and then two uh, goals by Parma, Kuchka in the 67th, and Bastone in the 71st made it 3 3. Then there was a, a two red cards, one for Cole from Santoria, and one for Kuchka. So all the friendship between those two, not so much. Uh, I see that possession was crazy for Sampdoria. I really, I, I would like to see the highlights of that one because that must have been a great game to watch. Genoa Roma 1-1 talked about it yesterday. Uh, dull game at first and then um, Roma takes lead through El Sharavi. Genoa equals in stoppage time, gets a penalty, misses that one. A point that doesn't help either team. Genoa needed the win to kind of feel a little bit security and Roma needed the win to stay in contention for uh, the uh, for the fourth place. They are dropping points, they fell three points behind Atalanta. Napoli Cagliari, the late game, haven't seen much 2-1 and then tonight I actually saw more than I intended to see but you know uh, it was one of those, it was started half an hour before um, a city against Leicester, so I watched the first half, switched over to City Leicester, finished that half, switched back to Milan, and then you see actually quite some. I only missed the first 15 minutes of the second half. Um, Milan started brightly, great chance by Cialanoglu. Bologna then actually was more dangerous and scored a goal that was fortunately not uh, given due to offside, but they were really, really da dangerous until finally Suso finds a breakthrough, and then Milan had quite some control. Uh, in the second half, um, again, Bologna is trying to go forward. Again, for them, every point counts. But then there were a few chances, and after, uh, especially over Paqueta, who did overall play a good game. Uh, shot of his uh, gets blocked, and he shoots again, and uh, the ball falls to Borino, who puts it in 2 0. 67th, everyone relieved. Fortunately, Bologna puts one back just uh, within five minutes. And then, for me, another uh, scene where Paqueta gets sent off for next to nothing. He is fouled. He is... I'm not even saying he's provoked or, or whatever. He's fall, fall, falling down and kind of a little bit upset about the whole whole holding as a foul of us given and the referee give, gives him a yellow card and he cannot believe it no and inadvertently touches the referee that's at least how i saw it i mean there was not a, a really bad attack on the referee there the referee shows him a second yellow and sends him off uh absolute disgrace honestly this is for me weak refereeing you as a referee you have to be a little bit get over your ego with Anyway, Milan gets it over time, 2-1, um, another Bologna player is sent off in the end, in the 9th, 5th partida. Didn't count uh, for much, at least for that game any, anymore. Milan gets a vital win and moves up now in 5th spot and survives a game that I was nervous about because they were missing basically their defense. Now if you look at the table, we have of course Juve on top, Napoli also I think is probably safe now in the Champions League. Inter 63, Atalanta 62, Inter is coming down a little bit, then Milan 59, Roma 59, so Milan moves up again two spots uh, and now Torino is in seventh spot, it's just crazy and uh, it's the remaining program that actually gives a slight advantage to Milan. Uh, Lazio 55 might well be out of, out of the race now for the Champions League for sure and I think 
for European spots, it will be really, really, really tough for them. Uh, do you have the cup final that you can go for? But you know, uh, 55 and Milan has 59 and Roma also, that's four points. That might be too much to get there. You can get the seventh spot for Torino, but that now depends on who wins the cup, more or less. Um, so that remains to be seen. Santore 49 in Nover, Sassuolo 42, Spal 42, Cagliari 40, Fiorentina 40, Parma 38. Yeah, those are now the Bologna 37, Genoa 36, Udine 34, and Empoli 32. So the relegation battle, I think Bologna should be safe, as is Parma. Genoa with only four points. Well, it's good to have those four points, but it's still hard. Udine 34 is really shaking out. That, that, that win for Empoli over Fiorentina was in no one's plans. So let's talk the uh, remaining program. Uh, we have now next match day. Milan goes to Fiorentina. Big game and Atalanta plays at home to Genoa. So I would expect Atalanta to win that one for sure. Roma plays Juventus, so that's going to be a tough one. Torino Sassuolo, just for the record. I think those are the four teams that, that we have to look at. Then, match day 37. We have Roma at Sassuolo, which they probably should win. Um, Juve Atalanta, that is probably... That could well decide who is going in, because Milan plays at home to Frosinone. Uh, Lazio Bologna, I see, but you know, that's Torino Empoli. So, I'm looking at that uh, game that could well decide whether it will be Milan or Atalanta, uh, Roma, as I said, Juve has a big part to play and it, it depends how serious we'll take uh, Juve. This. Um, then in the last round we have uh, Spal, Milan, Atalanta, Sassuolo and uh, Roma plays against Parma. So it's really the two Juventus games, they might well decide where Serie A is going in terms of who will finish in the top four. Ah, I probably should also look at Inter. Inter is playing in the next round, Kievo, that is a win. Then they play Napoli. That could be iffy. Although now Na Napoli is also not going anywhere and then the last round they play Empoli. So I think Inter is safe. Milan has a chance. Milan does have a chance, but you know, I don't quite believe it yet. So, let's go quickly over La Liga, there's not much uh, to talk because we talked most about it. Um, Sevilla Leganes, nil 3 absolute disgrace what Sevilla was doing. Levante Rayo, 4-1, Espanyol Atletico, 3-0, Alaves Real Sociedad, nil 1 Celta Vigo, 2-0 against Barcelona. Of course, if Barcelona plays their B-string squad, they are really focused on that Champions League tie at Anfield. And, yeah, happens... Tomorrow, or when you watch it, will be today. Um, I think Barcelona should be able to make it. Getafe, Girona, 2-0. Important win for Getafe. Uh, Eibar, Real Betis, 1-0. Real Madrid, Real 3-2. Uh, saw a little bit of that game, but, you know, it doesn't seem like an impressive result. Real Madrid, Athletic Club, 1-0. Uh, so, important win for uh, Valladolid. As was already for uh, Celta. I have to say. And then uh, Uesca loses 2-6 to Valencia, which has quite some implications for another um, Champions League race. Barcelona, Atletico and Real uh, are in there. Real has a minimum chance to catching Atletico. Getafe 58 looks good. It's two games to play. Um, they have the slightly better, better goal differential. Valencia 55 is now getting there, Valin uh, Sevilla 55. Ah, but I shouldn't look at goal differential, we should look at head-to-head. -head. That's, I don't know now who would have the tiebreaker. Because Valencia holds it over Sevilla for sure, 55, 55 there. But Valencia still has a chance, let's see. Bilbao uh, at 50 points, Real Sociedad 47, Espanyol 47. Um, and Alaves 47. So basically that's the top half. And then we see a uh, relegation battle. It changes every week uh, what's happening there. Uh, Eibar is in the no zone. Uh, as is Leganes, Real Betis. And I think now we start the relegation zone. Within three points. Celta Vigo 40. Villarreal 40. Levante 40. Real Valladolid 38. Girona 37. Rayo and Huesca I think are 
done, they cannot, it's two more rounds to play, they cannot get in there anymore. So yeah, um, we know two and then it's one out of Villarreal, Levante, Real Valladolid and Girona. Let's look at the remaining program. Um, Sevilla has to go to Atletico Madrid, that's not um, uh, easy, although it's probably uh, doable, because Sevilla always plays better against the big teams. Getafe at Barcelona, that could actually do something if Barcelona is taken serious, and that's what we're not showing. Then we have here a big uh, match between Girona and Levante. Um, Villarreal plays Eibar. Um, Valencia Alaves and Raya Vallecano against Real Valladolid. That's next uh, weekend and on the last day we have Sevilla against Bilbao. So Sevilla has, has a tough program. I think Sevilla is probably out of it. Celta Rayo could probably be enough for Celta. Girona is playing at Alaves. Mm, tough, tough, tough. Um, who else do we have? Getafe via Real. It really depends on Barcelona, I think. And Valencia plays at Real Valladolid, so that could be a match that decides relegation or who is going up. Levante at Atletico Madrid. Crazy. So let's go to the Bundesliga. Um, actually, let's start with the second Bundesliga here. Köln won 4-0 um, at Kreuter Fürth and is now fixed up there. Uh, Hamburg actually had a big loss. 3-0 at home to Ingolstadt, which really put them in trouble. But then all the other teams up there also lost. Union Berlin loses to Darmstadt. And uh, Paderborn loses at Bielefeld. So all of these are still very close together. 54, 53, 53. Hamburg is in at the moment fourth, but there's a relegation space in there. But this will be against Stuttgart. Other than that. Mainz Leipzig 3-3, Wolfsburg Nürnberg 2-0, uh, Bayern Hannover 3-1, Hertha Stuttgart 3-1, Gladbach Hoffmann 2-2, Bremen Dortmund 2-2, absolutely incredible. Dortmund had that game in the bag. They could have made the 3-0, should have made the 3-0 before halftime, and then crazy five minutes, and they lose uh, the vital two points, which, as we most likely will mean, that Bayern is gonna be champions again. Sorry to say. Schalke Augsburg 0-0, Freiburg Düsseldorf 1-1 and then Leverkusen Frankfurt 6-1, absolute destruction. Um, which means that Frankfurt has to really now um, fear for their Champions League spot. And still in the Europa League of course. Bayern 74 with two games to go, Dortmund 70. I don't think it's gonna happen. Leipzig 65 is in the Champions League, uh, Frankfurt Leverkusen 54, 54, Gladbach 52, Wolfsburg 52. Um, there is uh, the fourth spot is pretty much available for all of these, and they just need to. I think Gladbach Glad is probably the least like, likely of these. Hoffmann 51 has an outsider chance. Then Bremen probably is out of it 47, Düsseldorf 41. Hertha 40 and then um, Mainz 37, then we get to the relegation zone. Freiburg looks, yeah, it's even not even relegation. Freiburg looks safe, is safe at 33, Augsburg 32, uh, Schalke 31. Stuttgart cannot get to these teams any, anymore. They have 24 points. Nuremberg could theoretically catch uh, Stuttgart, Hannover, uh, could do so too, so they're not quite re relegated yet, and Nuremberg would have the better goal differential. Honestly, this ain't gonna happen. I think Stuttgart will get the relegation, Nuremberg and Hannover unfortunately will go down. And last Liga, it's gonna be a long video, but was well worth it. Quickly the results, Strasbourg, Marseille 1-1, one, one. PSG, Nice 1-1, one, one. Neymar makes a penalty, um, Cavani misses one. Gagan Kao, nil nil, a relegation battle right there. Um, Bordeaux Angers, nil one. Reims, Nîmes, nil three. Then Toulouse, Rennes, two two. Montpellier, Amiens, one one. Nantes, Dijon, three nil. Monaco, Saint Etienne, two three. And then the big one, Lyon, Lille, two two. Lyon had a half time lead of one nil. Lille turned turn around and Lyon actually comes back. Lyon probably was the slightly better team in that one. But just couldn't manage 
the winner and so they still have to hope for their qualification spot in the Champions League honestly so gonna be a tough one uh, because Saint Etienne is coming close uh, we have Lyon at 63 and Saint Etienne 62 I uh, don't think that uh, Lyon will be able to catch Lille they had a the big chance there Montpellier uh, 55 Marseille 55 maybe Europa League in there, uh, Nice 52, Nîmes 49, Reims 49, Strasbourg 46, Nantes 46, Angers 45, Rennes 45, Bordeaux, very disappointing season, 38 to lose 37, and now we go Amiens 34, Monaco 33, Caen 30, Dijon 28, Gergon 25. Uh, I know they have a relegation playoff, that Gangon could still reach, but uh, they had a big chance if they get to Cal. Um, Monaco might be a little bit shaky down there. Well, gonna do maybe a little bit more detailed video after next week when the Premier League is over. And I honestly, I do not get it why the Premier League is already over. Uh, all the other leagues have at least two, if not three, or in the case of it, yeah, three rounds to play. Um, why? Why decide it's early? I even don't understand it for the Champions League reason. Let's assume, I mean, it's, it was not un inconceivable that uh, there's an all English final and you give them almost a month off. I mean, the Champions League final is June 1st. The Premier League season ends this weekend. That's June, uh, May 10. Doesn't make much sense and shows, in my opinion, the disregard to the Premier League places on. Uh, the teams that actually want to do something in Europe, it's all about them. Yeah, it's way too early in my opinion, uh, especially when they cramp the program at certain points in the season. So I don't quite get it. I know we have relegation, promotion battles and all that, that kind of, kind of, kind of stuff. Still, why end it so early? But that's the last thought. You can let me know if you know more about that. Yep, we have two more titles almost decided. And then the big five are all through. We have five champions. Um, the last one that's really tight is between Liverpool and Manchester City. And I think huge advantage Manchester City. All they need is a win against Brighton on the road. Games still to be played. Well, let me know what you think about all these leaks, about the games tonight. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.